All right, welcome back to the channel. Some things we need to talk about. The C10 is still under construction. Um, currently, I am away from my home shop, so I'm unable to work on it. I've got some, I don't know when this video will actually be produced and put up, up on YouTube. We'll see what stage of construction the C10 is actually at. I know last time I left, uh, we were actually, and that wind is brutal. Yeah, we had shortened the frame. Uh, we got the rocker panels, floor pans, uh, cab corner on the passenger side completed. So whenever I get back home, we'll uh, continue that project. But I'm currently in a new location. I will be here for, for some time. Uh, I'm up in New, new England and there's a lot of snow. So I have been pretty much in a location where I didn't have a shop and I was indoors a lot and I got bored. I got a huge hankering to do some, uh, some kind of project work. We're gonna do this one kind of as like a person who just got into the, uh, the game of repairing vehicles. I came up here with nothing aside from clothes and the essential stuff. So it's kind of a, like a fresh start for me. I have no tools, which I purchased some today. A uh, couple consumables and bought a new ATV. So let me show that to you. Let me show you around this project. I have never owned a sport oriented ATV. I guess these are considered like trail bikes, stuff like that. I've never owned one. I've always found them to be very uh, cool. I mean, they just, they're cool, they're fast. They do all the brap brap, willy stuff. Uh, so yeah, I figured I'd give this a shot. See if we can have some fun with it. So it is a 05 Polaris Predator 500. It has some unfortunate graphics on it. So all that has to come off. It looks like someone tried to spray paint over them. But according to some research, there was a version called the Outlaw. And it had like a KTM engine in it and independent rear suspension. So apparently that's the more desired model according to some people uh, from what I understand it really depends on how you're trying to ride it but I'm not racing I'm not trying to be competitive I'm just trying to get an ATV and have some fun with it so let's walk around this thing body wise uh, it's got crack well actually I think that whole fender broke off yeah so we're going to learn how to do some plastic welding see if we can save that because these uh these rear fenders from what i've discovered pretty expensive like 350 bucks and uh if i was a first timer doing something like this i probably would not have enough money to replace that uh seat cover I mean, it's there. Seems like the the foam up underneath it is in relatively good shape. It's got a little wear out there. I think we can still save that. Uh, I had to look online, but apparently there's some panels. I think there's two panels on each side that kind of clean this section up uh, a lot of nuts and bolts missing there's zip ties in various places the front is actually relatively good condition we just like i said we've got to get a heat gun on this and get all the decals off i'm not a big fan of decals i might try to do some on this one but definitely not that kind they, uh, it's cheesy, in my opinion. 
Uh, but moving on to kind of the the generalness of this ATV, just from the outside looking in. Uh, we'll talk about bumpers and random things. This is a beefy grab bar. I mean, I kind of like it. But also like the look of the fat grab bars. So we might replace that. This tail light. I don't know. I don't think that's how it's supposed to go. So you might have to find a better way to mount that. Uh, and then the front bumper. I think these came from the factory with some. But it is... All four bolts broke off. So we're going to have to try to get those out. Uh, mechanically. So. I didn't find any major dings and dents in this thing. I don't know if these skid plates came factory. But some of the clips. Like there's one missing back here. That one's intact. Uh, they're there. Um, the center skid plate. I don't know if it came from the factory with one, but found some online that seemed relatively cheap. I'm not trying to run a big budget on this thing. But it does have Nerf bars. I've already done some research. I think I can replace that webbing for pretty cheap. A lot of loose nuts and bolts just kind of all over the place. I'm rather confident that's the stock header, but this mid pipe has been welded to some kind of exhaust. I mean, honestly, kind of looks like a car exhaust. Uh, kind of funny. I mean, I guess you use use what you have, so. We're definitely going to replace that. Probably not going to run a loud exhaust with where I'm at. There's a lot of state parks that have trails. And they'll let you ride. The only thing is they have a, from what I've heard, pretty strict decibel levels. So I'll probably just run a factory exhaust. Just to make life a little bit better. Uh, shocks, pretty neat, adjustable. I think those are... I believe those came from the factory with these. So, I'm having to learn a lot. So, all of this is pretty new to me. Now, I have hooked a battery to this and turned it over. Nothing sounded crazy. Need to top off the oil before I actually see if it will fire off. I'm going to check compression on it. But,. I think the engine's gonna be okay. Gonna be okay. Clutch pack, probably not so good. Uh, it's still grabbing when I pull the clutch in, in first and second, and try to roll it. So I don't know if it's just out of adjustment, but we're definitely going to have to dig deeper on that. Yeah. The sprocket, I'm not feeling any sharp edges. It's not feeling like a saw blade. So I think it will be good. Uh, if not, we'll, we'll replace that along with the front. Probably not going to do any gear changes on it. Just because I'm really not looking for anything like that. I just want to be able to drive this thing and have some fun. So, one issue. Missing something back here. Oh, first that zip tie. But uh, brake lines here. Caliper is not. Rotor missing in action. So those should be relatively easy to find and replace. I hope. If not, we're, we're in a bit of a predicament. Uh, all the shocks, 
We're doing shock stuff. It's not just super bouncy. I don't know how stiff these things are supposed to be. And the axle doesn't appear bent. Uh, from the little bit of rolling I've done, it rolls. Front brakes work. Uh, allegedly, this thing was running and driving uh, last riding season. So, hopefully, won't, won't run into many issues there. So, let's, let's talk more about this engine and some of the woes with that. The fellow I bought this from did say that it came with this cheap eBay carb on it. He had cleaned it and ran it with it, and it ran fine until it sat up for the season. And then I, he couldn't get it to start again. I don't know if he was running an air filter on it, but that could certainly be an issue, especially if it's been sucking up sand, dirt, and water. So engine might need some assistance. It's got the air box. Let's see what's in there. Whole lot of whole lot of nothing. Cool. So I found that piece that goes to there. And I want to find a factory carb and rebuild it for this thing. I think that's gonna be for what I'm wanting to do, that's probably going to be our best choice. The oil. It, uh, the very bottom of the stick there. And it smells like fuel. This thing, even when it was running, was probably running rich or maybe when he was cranking it over. Just kind of flooded the engine. Uh, but when I did turn it over, it sound no clicks, bangs, or pops, which doesn't necessarily narrow it down, but it's kind of a good sign, hopefully, that there's no significant engine issues. So for today, we're really not going to work on it much. The biggest thing is finding all the pieces that are missing. We're going to start ordering that. I'm going to do a, just a quick compression check. I'm going to top off the oil, spray a little starting fluid in it, just see if we can kind of hear the engine under compression running for a few seconds. That's probably going to be about all that we do with it. Let's talk about some of the tools I bought. So... Nothing major, just some consumables. I use that. Some people aren't a fan of it, but I mean, at this point, I'm not going to be running that car if I'm not going to clean it. Uh, I just want to see if it'll bump off. I've been needing a good travel toolkit, so I feel like this this 225 piece. From Pittsburgh is about a hundred and forty dollars plus there's no sales tax where I'm at so that helped out quite a bit I feel like it's gonna be a good starter set for just about anybody and then it's it's a good set to transport with you it's from what I've heard all the pieces stay locked in decently well which is nice especially throwing it in the bed of your truck trunk whatever help keep things organized because that's, that's a big waste of time whenever you're working on something searching for a 10 millimeter that you've conveniently lost but yeah this will be a good start i'm sure there's going to be more tools we we need and we'll just kind of pick those up as we go but a cheap compression tester so let us know if we're even dealing with a engine that's capable of running it's your thumb test putting your thumb over the cylinder and letting it blow it out you can't really can't measure it too well some people can 
but I can't. I just got some, some gloves because it's cold and a dead man hammer. Which, as we go along, we'll need more tools. Plus, buckets are always nice to have. So yeah, that's it. We're uh, starting completely over like a high school kid that's just wanting to get into this. Yeah. Just drop some oil off in it. I pull the spark plugs and see what we got for compression. So I actually misspoke there. I didn't use WD-40. Uh, typically try to use some kind of oil. So I actually use some uh, some 10W40 that I had late that I used to top this thing off with. post you up here get this guy back down in here there we go bumped it up I don't know what would we call that probably about 100 and some change after we put the lube in it so uh, while I've got the spark plug out I see if I have spark and then we'll see if we can start this thing with starting fluid pulling that spark plug out actually doesn't look like it's in bad condition it doesn't not excessively fouled. The gap looks a little narrow, but we'll see. Get that close to there. Key on and the battery on. Let's see if we have spark. Yep. Plenty of spark. It's really consistent too. My, my theory is that most every ATV I've worked on, if I've had 80 to 90 on the compression gauge, I can typically get it to run. So, put this back in with a little bit of starter fluid. Uh, one complaint on this tool kit, spark plug sockets are half inch drive. Never seen them like that. Uh, sure they have a purpose or a reason behind that. Just normally with your 3 8 extensions, especially working around like headers and some of the tight clearances that you get in spark plugs, 3H just easier to get in there. So, don't know if that's going to be a problem or not. Alright, we're going to see what she's got. That was way too much. I think it's safe to say that we've got some problems. That, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was not great. Now we know why low in oil. 
that blew out of there. And uh, definitely sounded like a rod or a piston or something in that top end just beating around. So, <laughs> so this happens. You know, typically whenever they say it just needs carb cleaning, there's more to the story. Uh, so yeah, not super surprised. Still kind of funny though. So yeah, sounds like we're uh, we're gonna be digging into that engine some. Man. That sounded bad. At least it's not seized up, but it is, it is knocking something fierce. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up, get something underneath it so that I don't ruin the concrete. Yeah, so earlier you know how I was saying just because it sounded good when I was turning it over doesn't mean anything. This, this is what I was talking about. Something's not happy in there. We're just going to get an inventory of tools we need, parts we need, stuff like that. And the next episode is probably going to be us tearing this sucker completely down. So that's going to do it for today. I uh, appreciate you guys. What am I... What? starter fluid I don't think I'll need this again anyways see that's it. that's going to do it for today now we at least kind of have an idea of the uh, the wonderful pile of parts we purchased so yep uh, as we go along with this I'm every video that I post I'm going to include some links in the description below. I'm also going to include uh, parts, tools, prices, stuff like that, and we're gonna keep a running tally as we go through this. Now, this may change depending on where you buy your stuff, what state you're in, sales tax, stuff like that, but this will also be a good general idea of how much it costs to actually do these things. So, we'll try to keep it extremely budget friendly but now we also have to dig into this engine so that's definitely going to be some extra cost appreciate everything you guys uh like subscribe do all that stuff below and uh follow us on this journey of what seems to be one mistake of many more that'll definitely be made so thank you guys